What's going on everybody? This is a Roaming Prepper channel. This is your host Pete. Thank you for coming to check out the video. Today we're going to talk about something unique. So um, here we are in uh, now middle of July 2022 and Russia did something to Germany. Russia and Ukraine have been in a firefight for now almost seven months and they did something to the EU but they did it in a way I did not expect and I actually think it's very genius on the part of Russia, really puts the EU in a bind. What did they do? I'll be right back and we're going to talk about that and the implications of the way they did what they did. Hang on just a second. Welcome back everyone. This is the Roaming Prepper channel. As I said before, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment question. You want to put gibberish in the comments. That's fine too. Don't insult other people. Play nice with the other children in the playground in the comments. I do try to answer all legitimate questions. If you put gibberish, I might put gibberish back just because it sounds like fun. In any case, let's go on to the meat of the topic. What exactly did Russia just do? So here we are in the middle of July, 2022. Russia and the Ukraine have been in a war, essentially, undeclared war since the begin almost the beginning of this year. And uh, the EU and the West, NATO, the EU, the US, Canada, have all been supporting the Ukrainians to help them defend themselves against Russia. Russia, regardless of who had what justification, they've been in a fight and it basically has become a big, ugly stalemate, which is not cool for anybody. However, uh, Russia has been threatening to cut off oil and cut off grain. They've, they've been saying a lot of stuff. So I, I had the benefit this week of meeting Texas Redleg, who's another YouTube creator, was passing through my part of West Texas or close enough to me where he and I could meet for a coffee and we were kind of talking about this. So by the way, check out his channel if you don't get a, if you haven't done so already. But Redleg and I got to sit down and got to talking about international stuff and the things that are going on. And I started looking more into the topic and he kind of brought it up and said, yeah, the Russians just uh, cut off Germany's gas. But what Russia did, so Russia has been threatening to cut off gas supplies to Europe. Europe, unfortunately for them, have committed to get the majority of their natural gas for heating and electricity from Russia. But now they're supporting Russia's foe, Ukraine, and so Russia's threat, been threatening to turn off the gas. They finally are about to do it. They've cut over 60% of the imports coming from Russia a few months ago or in the last month, and now they're about to cut some more. But what they're claiming is force majeure. It's not being called a, uh, an act of war. It's not being done in retaliation because you're supporting Ukraine. It was a business term. They claimed force majeure. I did not see them, that coming and it's actually brilliant on the part of the Russians. Now, why? Why is it so brilliant? Well, all right, let's talk about that. So from a business standpoint, if you claim force majeure, if I have a contract with someone else and I cannot fulfill the contract, I can get penalized, right? I can get sued. I can have to pay a liability. There are things that I have to incur as a result of not fulfilling my agreement in a contract, right? That makes sense. Now, if I breach, breach a contract, but I claim force majeure, that force majeure phrase, and those of you who are legal eagles can you know, elaborate further down, I'm keeping it kind of simple, basically means something force majeure is a force greater, if you translate it, something beyond my control, acts of God. So for instance, if I say, hey, I'm gonna build you a, uh, I'm gonna build a theme park here and I make a commitment to a city that I'm gonna build a theme park and I, they commit money and resources, and then um, a hurricane comes and destroys the area, well, now I may not be able to build it. So I can claim force majeure. Hey, I can't help this. You know, this, this thing happened. I, I don't control hurricanes, so I breach my contract. And in most cases, it alleviates any penalty to me, in most cases. So Russia wisely, instead of saying, hey, you know what? You're supporting my, our foes 
and we're going to cut off your gas and to you or hey um, we want to collapse your economy so to you no they claim force majeure and what it's about is uh, throughout the Nord pipeline which is the one that brings natural gas from Russia all the way to Europe um, there's a bunch of compressor stations that have these massive turbines that that spin and propel the natural gas which is in a gas form right um, it's not liquefied natural gas LNG it's in a gas form and it's being propelled through these pipelines right and in a, in a very generic example it's kind of like if you have a gas stove the pipeline coming through to your stove is being pushed by a little turbine, a small itty bitty turbine somewhere in your subdivision that's pushing the gas through the pipes. But this is massive. Russia's claiming, well, force majeure. We're in a conflict with Ukraine. Um, we can't find supplies. We don't have enough people. There's inflation. We can't afford to repair it. They came up with a bunch of business excuses and said, eh, force majeure, sorry, we can't fix the turbine, so you're not getting any gas. So why is that relevant? First of all, I think it's genius. Devious, and not very nice, but genius. Because technically speaking, they're not committing an act of war and aggression. They're committing a business case. Take us to court. Take us to the world court. Sue us in the Hague. But the bottom line is, Russia is basically going, mm, I broke it, and they're dropping the little thing, and they go, mm, it's broken, and now Germany's screwed because 80% of their gas, if I did the numbers right, is coming from Russia. That includes their power plant. So now Germany's in a panic and the Green Party, which is in charge now, is trying to spin up the nuclear plants again, which they should never have shut them down because they were actually very safe, the ones Germany had, because they were designed by Germany, right? They're really good engineers over there. Um, they've been shutting them down and now they gotta try and figure out how to spin them up. Canada is offering to help them replace the parts because Canada has them, but Russia's like, oh, I'm sorry, we have a war. It's not safe. And Russia's going hee 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 in the background. In the meantime, Germany's about to get screwed. And so are a few other small countries around them. Absolutely devious move by the Russians. But if you think about it from their perspective, they're like, well, you're supporting us. And why do we want to go out of our way and try and get equipment at triple the cost in the current supply chain environment when you're screwing us. So good luck with that. And so now any action Germany takes against Russia could be seen as retaliatory. And not only is it a war provocation, Russia could just sue Germany, literally can say, hey, we claim force majeure. You uh, sanctioned us for no reason. That's an act of war or that's a bad faith business. So now we're gonna pull the plug on something else. And this little game can go on and on where Russia pulls the plugs on things in Germany. Absolutely brilliant move. I didn't see that one coming. I gotta admit, I wouldn't have thought of it. And that's pretty evil, but it, it accomplished the goal, right? Now Germany's in a tizzy. And who are the two big players in the NATO alliance besides the US and Canada is England and Germany. Well, England now has to replace their prime minister because Johnson just retired or stepped down because someone was being a pervert in a circle. And now Germany has no gas. Oh, by the way, all those electric cars, if you have no natural gas, you have no power plant, no grid in the plugs, no power in the plugs. And guess what? The electric cars are screwed too. Now, so what is Germany going to do? That remains to be seen. The U.S. is saying, hey, we can spin up drilling. The oil and gas companies here are like, we can spill, spin up drilling, try and get you liquefied natural gas out of New Orleans. But they're fighting the president right now because the president's like, I don't want to drill more because of the environment. So U.S. is kind of fighting with itself. Canada says, I can't help you, but I can give you the parts to fix the compressor stations. But Russia's like, well, I'm not going to allow you into the country. I have a war. Sorry, sucks to suck. And so Egypt is now offering to send them liquefied natural gas, but that's a very tedious process. And for Egypt to change the direction of their products and change the logistics could take a month or more in the middle of the summer. This is not a good position for Germany to be in. So I don't know where it's gonna go from here. Now, Egypt and Germany seem to have been on friendly terms. So hopefully, 
they can figure out a way to work something out where they can get what they need or enough of what they need from Egypt and maybe from Saudi. I don't know. This remains to be seen, but the play on the part of the Russians, absolutely brilliant. And that's where I'm saying that Putin is not to be underestimated. I'm not a fan of, of the shit he's doing, but that was actually genius. They must have figured this one out a while ago because that's not something you just conjure. Um, very well played move and uh, let's see where it goes. But what's gonna happen is without that, plus the fact that the um, economic reports in the US and in the West are crap, the price of oil and natural gas are gonna start going up. And as we head into the winter, it's gonna get ugly. And it's gonna come home to Canada, the US, Australia, and the rest of us. So yeah, it's gonna be very interesting. What we're witnessing right now is a economic war, a business war. At the same time, there's an actual physical combat going on in Eastern Europe. So how this is gonna pan out remains to be seen. But you know who's going to hurt the most and who's going to hurt first? Watch for those small and mid-sized economies such as Sri Lanka, which we've already seen go downhill, as well as some of the others, you know, the Ecuadors, the Argentinas, they're already struggling. If the fuel spikes, fuel spikes too much or if the supply chain gets even more affected because of this increase in fuel or unavailability of it in general, you're going to start seeing these smaller economies starting to collapse and pull Sri Lanka. So, remains to be seen. Ladies and gentlemen, be safe, be frosty, but I thought I'd throw that out there. That's what force majeure is, and that's what Russia did. And that was devious, but super brilliant. Let's see where it goes. Good luck, Godspeed, be safe.